on to the next episode. Um, this one's going to be all about resource management. Hopefully you're at least somewhat familiar with the game by now. And even if you're really familiar with the game, uh, instructions I give you here will still be able to help you out as like a common sense check. Uh, sometimes we have blind spots, you might have overlooked something in your gameplay, so even if you're pretty experienced at the game, I definitely recommend that you uh, take a look at what I'm showing here and see if it makes sense to you and if it verifies what you've already been doing as far as resource management goes. So to me, uh, the first step of resource management is looking at your consorts. Uh, consorts are something that you can't control as much as some other parts of the game because uh, what you get is what you get, basically. Um, so taking a look at mine real quick, uh, Corena is one of my best. I'm going to bring up my spreadsheets here. You're going to have to get used to spreadsheets in my videos from now on. That's how I keep track of things. So for those of you who are newer watching this video, um, the charm stat, which is the lower one here, that's how fast your consort is going to gain experience in the courtyard. So basically, the higher their charm is, the faster they're going to get stronger. So if you're not, if you've got a consort that has really high charm, which all the ones that come from the VIP, pack, VIP packs are really high charm, you should be building those, and you should likewise be building the advisors that go along with them. If you're not, you're wasting resources. Uh, so here you can kind of see that I've got my top three thrown on this spreadsheet. You know how fast they gain XP, and then intimacy unlocks the skills. So I boosted Corinna's Intimacy really high so I could get the Tier 3 skill. Uh, Anna's at Tier 2. and yeah. Anyway, so the point is you should be uh, building up your best consorts that synergize with the advisors that you have. So that's where you start as far as resource management goes. You start with consorts. And uh, then the next step is to move on to your advisors. So I'm going to explain what this table is. Um, basically, these tables will all... Spreadsheets will all be links in the bottom of the video, by the way. I'll put them in the video description so you can get the spreadsheets if you want them. Check your own stats, see how your things line up. So how the spreadsheet works is you start with a scoring table. Um, it will assign a, a base score to your advisor based on you know what color they are, how many stars they have, and all that. So that gives them a certain value to begin with. Um, I'm going to go over, and I've already filled out most of these, but I'll take mine for board shoe however you pronounce his name. I'm over to advisors now. Here he is. So he is a two star purple. So two star purple here is going to be 43. So I'll go ahead and pop that in. 43. And then enter his current attributes. This entering the attributes is kind of a way to kind of lump together everything you've done to develop them, because their attributes will be made higher by the consorts, the equipment, the level. So this is just a way of kind of gauging how strong they are in general right now. So I'll sort by attributes. He's at 24k. So I'll go ahead and throw that in there. 242. Okay. And then Current upgrade cost is the last thing you're going to want to fill out. It's not showing very well here. So how much does he cost to upgrade currently? Costs 1.705 million. 1.705. And then we keep going over. And it says his score is a 6. Uh, that's not very high. It's because I've put a lot of silver into him already, and so it's becoming really expensive to upgrade him. Um, if I were to do another, so Chilon, I've been putting a lot of money into him too. His current attributes are at 5, 2, 6, and then I'll put in the upgrade cost, 2, 3, 8, 9, and then he's a 9. So the reason why his score is relatively higher is I've put just a crap load into his consort that's linked to him. That's really boosting his stats. It's making him a more efficient place for me to invest my silver in because he's got all those. Uh, it's his talents, too. His talents are a big part of what's making him such a good investment. So you see his talents here are really high. That's making, me, making him gain a lot of stats every time he levels up. So because of the high talents... Um, the spreadsheet is telling us, hey, you should be investing your silver in this guy because you're getting a great return for what you put into him. 
So that's why uh, he's so high level. I've been boosting his consort. Like I said, the step one was figuring out your best consort. You put your investment into them. Next is advisor. I've been throwing a lot of talents into him because I'm boosting the advisor link, to the, sorry, the consort linked to him anyway. And so now he ends up just being ultra strong. And that's kind of what happens is you'll have like a top tier, one or two maybe strongest advisors, and then you'll have like a second tier and a third tier and so on and so on. And the villages that have your highest tier advisors in them are going to be where you're going to put the majority of your meat into. So that's kind of the next step in this whole resource management process. So now I've got this open. So it's the list of my villages. Um, so right at the top is the one that this guy's assigned to. Let me just go over there for you real quick. And you will see. Put in the silver output. That's going to be... Wow, it's been a while since I updated this. 5.0... Four. And then the meat output. Three point nine eight seven. Now I just leave the soldier column alone, and the reason why I do that is because it just takes too much time for me to constantly update how many soldiers are being made, and I don't really care if you're trying to maximize your income, really meat and silver are the big deal. Yeah, soldiers are nice, but I just don't think it's worth paying attention to. I mean, you can put it in and the spreadsheet will assign a value to it. I have it waiting the soldier value to be worth one third as much as those other two. So it's not gonna weight the soldier output very heavily, but you can put that in if you want. I guess I will, why not? Making a video. But if you, yeah, if you're crunched for time, don't bother to update the soldiers. It's not as important. Go over and upgrade cost is currently sitting at 3.5, okay. 3.578. I entered something wrong there. Oh, here's what I entered wrong. I wasn't supposed to put a point into that. 3.578. There we go. That's more reasonable. So it takes, you know, how much you're getting, how much bang for your buck you're getting each time you upgrade. And it says, okay, so this is the approximate value you get if you were to upgrade this again. Uh, I haven't updated this in a while, but right now it's saying based on the old numbers that some of these others are better investments for my meat, probably because they're upgraded way less, so they're just so much cheaper to upgrade, even though they've got, they've got a crappy advisor in them, it's, they're still a better value. So that's kind of how I manage my resources. and. I only update this like maybe once a day at most. And usually whenever I update it, I'll have some that are red because I've been kind of misallocating my resources a little. And then I have to kind of bump that back and fix it a little. But overall, it's I think the spreadsheet is maybe not always 100% accurate, but it's it's probably in the right ballpark most of the time. So if you were to go into these spreadsheets, enter your own numbers, and you're getting really weird numbers, Maybe you're not doing something right, or maybe you're not entering into the spreadsheet right. But I've tried to show you how to enter it, so go ahead and check it out. Give it a try, see how it goes, and let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching.